Good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's meeting of planning at Tamworth Borough Council. Uh, unfortunately, we received apologies from the chair, Councillor Marie Bailey, so obviously as vice chair, I'm stepping in. Uh, just a reminder to all members that this meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube later this evening. Uh, apologies for absence. We've received apologies from Councillor Marie Bailey and Councillor John Waldrop. Are there any other apologies that need recording? Thank you very much. I'll take us to item two on our agenda, which is minutes of the previous meeting. This is the meeting held on the 16th of January 2024. I require a mover and a seconder, as unfortunately I wasn't present, so I can't do it. <laughs> it's been moved by Councillor Wood, seconded by Councillor Cooper. All those in favour? Those minutes are carried. Thank you very much. I'll take us to item three. Are there any declarations of interest for the business of this evening? There are none. Thank you very much. I'll take us to the substantive motion of tonight's agenda then. Applications for consideration. We have 0451 slash 2022, land off Apollo Tamworth, Litchfield Road Industrial Estate. And I'll hand over to the planning officers for a brief presentation on what we've got before us this evening. Thank you. Good evening, thank you, Chair. Um, my name's Andrew Davis. Um, for those of you that haven't met me previously, I'm the planning officer who has um, considered this application and uh, would like to take you through my presentation. Um, as the chairman said, um, the uh, proposal is for the erection of 10 units um, of uh, use class B2, B8 and um, two subsections of class E uh, with ancillary office use, associated parking and landscaping. And straight away, okay, I've got to grips now with the uh, uh, computer. Um, the site location is um, just off Apollo, uh, which as you'll know is one of the principal routes in the Litchfield Road employment area. Um, and um, the specific site, as you can see from that, is uh, quite a narrow site fronting onto Apollo on the um, northern and northeastern side of uh, an existing uh, warehouse type building. Looking at the site in a, a little bit more detail there, you can see the, um, the shape of the site within the red line. The, um, the area identified within blue um, is a mix of um, hard standing area and existing building, um, all of which is within the ownership of the uh, applicant. The proposed layout um, very much reflects the fact that you've got a, uh, such a narrow um, uh, shape to the uh, the plot of land in question um, with two units running side by side on the western side um, and the remainder of the units um, all as uh, individual units end on to each other um, with uh, central ones um, facing north towards uh, Apollo there and they like the two on the, um, the western side would all be completely new build units the, um, the two on the eastern side of the site, um, they would actually be uh, redeveloped existing buildings um, that uh, are located there. And surrounding each of them to the front, uh, you'd have the car parking, vehicle parking and various access routes. Um, as you can see, the buildings themselves um, uh, are either hard up to the, the site boundaries um, particularly um, with the central row up against the, um, the side of the, the existing buildings to the rear of them. In uh, assessing this application, um, there's a, a number of things that have um, uh, been particularly important. Principle, character and appearance, highway safety, amenity, ecology, flood risk assessment and mitigation and drainage, um, which did actually turn out to be the lengthiest part of the, um, the whole process with this application, um, down to um, Staffordshire County Council's Lead Local Flood Authority team uh, being particularly diligent in how they approached the application. Um, and uh, it took quite some time uh, ultimately to, uh, to resolve their issues, um, but they were indeed resolved. Taking each of them in turn, um, looking at the principle of the development, um, the local plan, um, as you know, was adopted in February 2016 um, and 
key policies SS1 and SS2 relating to spatial strategy for Tamworth and presumption in favour of sustainable development um, uh, are such that um, the, the proposal uh, accords with those. Policy EC7 strategic employment areas identifies the Litchfield Road employment area of which the land is part um, as, uh, as being an area where uh, permission should be granted for these industrial type uses, B1, B2, B8 for example. Um, it goes on to state as well that um, a new development should also provide appropriate soft and hard landscaping um, and um, appropriate permeable surfaces, um, signage and lighting, all in order to ensure um, the um, uh, appropriate character and appearance of the area and um, that it, it works from a, um, a drainage perspective as well. Um, it should be noted that we, uh, we had in 2020 um, a change to the use classes um, within uh, England and use class B1, which is referred to within policy EC7, um, was replaced with class E. And that's why you'll see the references there to class E within the, uh, the use classes. Um, class E as a whole is a very wide ranging um, development, uh, land use class. Um, however, the particular um, subsections of Class E applied for by the applicant here uh, relate to research and development of products and as the use classes um, legislation describes it, um, any industrial process that can be carried out in any residential area. So um, just to, to make clear that the, uh, the use classes that are being requested there are indeed appropriate to that area. Um, and it is considered as a result that the proposed development um, does comply with um, the policies of the local plan um, in, in principle. Looking at character and appearance, um, policy EN5 of the local plan, design of new development, is the, the key policy um, for us there. Um, and as it shows on the slide, um, that states that development should be of a scale, layout, form and massing which conserves or enhances the setting of the development and utilises materials and overall design which conserves or enhances the context of the development. Well, the, the existing site, um, as you uh, are probably aware, is uh, one that is um, predominantly surfaced, um, car park type surfacing across most of it, um, some parts where um, earlier buildings have been removed, um, but it's not been in use for um, quite a few years now. It's all um, sort of overgrown around the edges, um, and in terms of its character and appearance, is in a, a very poor state. The area around it um, is uh, not typified by any one particular style of building, other than to say that they are all in one way or another, um, industrial or commercial type premises. Um, the majority are um, sort of one and a half um, stories in height, um, with the exception of the, um, the warehouse in the ownership of the, the applicant immediately to the south, which um, is uh, a full two story uh, plus height uh, building. Um, and so the, um, the proposed development um, would bring a, a, a new um, commercial industrial type building within an area that is, um, is surrounded by um, uh, buildings out of nature, but much older ones. You'll see here, um, hopefully that's clear enough. Um, the intention is to uh, follow um, what has become a, a very typical way of um, uh, colouring buildings of this nature. Um, this, this gradation of colours from um, dark to light, from ground level up to the highest points. Um, it's very typical now with uh, many um, industrial type buildings, uh, particularly very large tall ones. Um, but the, uh, the applicants have proposed to follow that sort of approach um, across the site so that all of the proposed buildings would have that same appearance 
um, with yellow highlighting for the vehicle doors which will be provided into each of the 10 units. Um, the current warehouse type building immediately to the south of the site, um, that actually has um, yellow doors on it at present, um, albeit it's of a, 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 a single um, sort of drab grey um, colour across its um, uh, entire site. All of the proposed buildings would be two storey in height. Um, floor areas would range from 86 to 465 square metres. Um, as I've mentioned, they'd all be of um, pretty standard um, external appearance. Um, units one to eight, uh, inclusive, facing onto Apollo, um, as I mentioned earlier, would all be of new build construction. Units nine and 10 um, would be um, uh, redeveloped um, structures that are already in place on that eastern side of the site. Um, scale and height of the buildings um, would certainly be in keeping with the, um, uh, in terms of height, the building immediately to the south of them. Um, no taller than that. And um, broadly speaking, um, would be uh, only slightly taller than many of the buildings on um, the opposing side of Apollo or indeed Borman. Um, it's considered, um, therefore, that uh, overall um, the character and appearance uh, would be consistent with what we require of, uh, of policy EN5, design of new development. Looking at highway safety matters, um, as usual, uh, we, um, we went to uh, Staffordshire County Council Highways uh, for their input onto this. Um, they um, assessed it and... Um, their assessment, along with ours, noted that um, there would be two entrances um, off Apollo um, onto the, uh, the new site, um, both of which are already there today. Um, however, they would end up obviously being improved um, with the development. Um, so there would be one um, which would serve um, the eight new build units um, and uh, an existing unit, uh, sorry, existing access um, serving uh, units 9 and 10 to the, the eastern side. Uh, the applicant had provided a transport statement, framework travel plan, um, which were uh, accepted by Staffordshire County Council Highways um, as being appropriate. Um, the, uh, those plans and the, um, the site plan indicate a total of 81 parking spaces, um, of which eight are for persons of reduced mobility, uh, and 11 uh, would be fitted with electric vehicle charging points um, from the outset. Um, and in addition, um, there would be a number of um, cycle parking um, positions around the site, uh, giving um, secure cycle parking for up to 24 bicycles. Um, Staffordshire County Council Highways requested the imposition of planning conditions uh, relating to the provision of appropriate car and vehicle parking, um, in terms of the spaces being marked um, and, and bound suitably, um, and also um, that the uh, proposed cycle, uh, secure cycle parking um, be uh, a conditioned requirement. Um, consequently, uh, as there was nothing outstanding from a highways or highway safety perspective, uh, the proposal is considered to be acceptable uh, in respect of policy SU2, uh, sustainable transport. Looking at the amenity aspects of the proposal, um, the nearest residential dwellings to the site uh, are to the northeast on Frevel Close. Um, there, um, the nearest of those is just over 50 metres away, with the remainder obviously a little bit further away than that. Um, they're separated from the site by um, Apollo itself um, and also, also existing commercial premises um, on the other side of the road. Um, uh, located right next door to the nearest of the um, domestic prim uh, dwellings. Um, on Moore Street, which is where the next nearest um, dwellings are, um, they're uh, a little further away again at about 100 metres distant and separated by the, um, the playing field from the uh, proposed site. So there are no um, immediate um, uh, residential neighbours to the site. Um, as a result, uh, there'll be insignificant issues associated with overlooking or loss of privacy, um, or it's considered sen a sense of overbearing 
um, to any of those neighbours. Um, all of the other buildings sharing a boundary um, with the site um, or within up to about 100 metres of it are commercial premises themselves uh, that would be unlikely to have any amenity concerns and indeed it's worth noting that there have been no responses to this application at all um, from any of the neighbours, um, be it residential um, or commercial. Um, we have elected though to um, require a construction management plan um, which although originally emerging from uh, requirements uh, put forward by Staffordshire County Council Highways um, they'd also include limitations on working hours during construction um, and where appropriate measures to limit um, noise for the benefit of the nearest neighbours. Looking at ecology uh, the application was assessed by the um, Staffordshire County Council ecologist um, and on receipt of um, landscaping and lighting plans um, she has determined that the proposal is acceptable um, subject to imposition of a, a pre-commencement planning condition uh, requiring a plan detailing um, the particular species she's identified specifically bat, bird and hedgehog and tree protection measures um, and also including the role of an ecologist in ensuring the, um, the ecological aspects uh, of the, uh, the site um, are respected during construction. Um, the policy is therefore considered to be in accordance with, uh, sorry, the proposal is therefore considered to be in accordance with policy and for protecting and enhancing biodiversity of the Tamworth local plan um, and with the MPPF. The development site, um, along with uh, pretty much the whole of the area covered by the um, Litchfield Road uh, employment area, is actually defined by the Environment Agency as being within Flood Zone 3, um, as having a high probability of flooding. Um, however, it is an area that is protected by flood defences, um, which means that the although Flood Zone 3 is the, um, uh, the zone which it's within and would ordinarily, um, if there was no flood protection there, require all sorts of measures to be taken um, to, pre to protect against flooding impacts. Um, in this case, the Environment Agency um, have advised that um, there is no actual requirement to... Um, uh, to do anything other than to um, uh, follow the uh, standard uh, recommendations that they make um, and as a consequence of this um, they, um, they have taken the approach that um, they are uh, content with the, uh, the proposed development um, from a, uh, a flood risk perspective. Moving on from flood risk then to um, drainage, um, the applicant has worked extensively with Staffordshire County Council in its role as lead local flood authority um, and the LLFA uh, now considers the proposed drainage plans acceptable subject to conditions. Um, Seven Trent Water were also uh, consulted um, early on in the process um, and they responded stating that it had no objections to the proposals um, subject to um, the, the conditions which um, uh, have actually stemmed from the work that's been done with the LLFA. Um, it's considered therefore that um, subject to compliance with the conditions requested by the Lead Local Flood Authority that the proposal is in accordance with policy SU4 of flood risk and water management of the local plan. So in conclusion therefore um, the proposal for the erection of 10 units um, uh, cla use class B2, B8 and class E, G2 and 3 with ancillary office use, associated parking and landscaping has been assessed with respect to principle of development, character and appearance, highway safety, neighbour amenity, ecology, flooding and drainage implications. Being a proposal for further industrial uses within a designated strategic employment area within the urban area of Tamworth, the principle of development should be accepted subject to the proposal meeting the requirements of the local plan in respect of the key considerations um, outlined above. Um, it's considered that in each of those policy areas, uh, the proposal has met the requirements of the, um, the local plan, 
um, and therefore it is recommended that the um, proposal uh, be approved subject to conditions. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, I believe we have no objectors this evening. Uh, nobody to promote the application, no? In that case, then, I'll ask the members of the committee, do you have any questions for our planning officers? Councillor Cooper. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just the one question for me. It's quite a large site. Um, I just want a bit of assurance that the car park, 81 spaces, you said, for quite a large site. Is that sufficient car parking for the, uh, for the, for the proposed uh, development? Uh, in terms of meeting the requirements of Appendix C of the local plan, which is one of the things that the Staffordshire County Council Highways consider, um, yes, they have confirmed that it, it fully meets the, those requirements. Uh, that's fine. Cheers, Chair. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Harper. Oh, I'll answer to either. It's very kind. Uh, yeah, um, it's... Uh, any new development is to be welcomed that's going to bring in employment, jobs and that sort of thing. Uh, there are a couple of points that I like. Well, architecturally, it's pretty abysmal. It's typical toothpaste um, architecture of the lowest quality that will um, that is now predominant in industrial estates. But it is an industrial estate, so it is what it is. Um, I would have liked to have seen some variation in the uh, the heights or the or the, the front. It's just it's just one long, huge shed, basically, to my opinion, anyway. But it's uh, presumably it's going on the old co Corona site. That's correct, is it? I believe it was um, Corona that had it, but I don't know quite when and how much of that area Corona. Yeah, um, it's, used it's to quite occupy. a big factor in this site. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. Um, one of the big problems that I, I, I use Apollo quite regularly, because in the business I, I use bookers and drive along there, the state of Apollo is absolutely dire. It's a slalom. You have to drive like this to get round Apollo. Staffordshire County Council, I well, I would suggest, ought to be having a really hard look at this because it's... Um, this is going to generate an awful lot more traffic who are going to be using a terrible road. Um, are Staffordshire uh, County Council aware of, of this? Have they looked at the quality of that road and the gaping holes and chasms that are there? Um, in, in answer to that question, the, the planning team at Staffordshire County Council Highways are clearly aware of it because they've, um, they've been consulted upon it and they've considered it uh, on highway safety matters um, on our behalf. Uh, whether the other parts of the Staffordshire County Council highways responsible for road renewal programmes and the like are aware of it in the same way, I'm afraid I can't tell you. Um, but certainly, um, you know, your point is noted that uh, it will generate additional traffic um, and um, at some point in the future improvements to the, the road surface in this area, that area would certainly be uh, welcome um, but from a, a car parking perspective um, and impact on the the road immediately beside the site from a purely highway safety perspective uh, that has been taken into account by the officers that we uh, we consulted thanks for that andrew yeah um there are obviously by the very nature of this, huge lorries pass along this road and often park. So you've got to go round the, the lorries and it can be quite um, quite hairy at times um, because of the, the quality of the, or the poor quality of the road surface. So I would suggest that the whole of the, <laughs> the whole of the estate is looked at because it's really well over overdue to have some maintenance put, put into it. But, um, yeah, getting back to this one, I can't think of any good reason why we should... Well, I can think of good reasons. It looks horrible, but in my opinion. But um, it's going to serve a purpose, and uh, it's not going to affect uh, householders in, to any great degree. Um, I suspect that it will deteriorate 
looked very scruffy before too long. Um, I'd have liked to have seen more brick involved, but uh, that would probably uh, be inhibited by the price. Uh, it is what it is. It's a huge shed, um, which is just going to be subdivided into various units. Um, so, sorry, Councillor Harper, is there, is there a question in this? Because we're still in questions at the moment. Is there a question coming? Sorry. Yeah, we haven't, I'll we, think we haven't moved one. to debate yet. <laughs> I'll think of one, yeah. Um, with the, um, the parking, it, does each particular unit have a designated parking area or is it one general parking spot? Uh, my expectation at the moment is that um, as and when um, clients have been found by the developer for the um, each of the units then um, there is the potential for them to have designated parking however on the basis that the development is has been explained to me as being a speculative development I think at this stage precise arrangements of, of parking um, are possibly yet to be determined between the units Thank you, Andrew. Any further questions? Please, Councillor Coates. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, what are the working hours? Because it, obviously it says, well, do you know what the hours are that they'll be working on the development? Uh, we haven't specified working hours as yet. Um, the condition um, for the Construction Environment Management Plan um, requires that they'll they present um, a plan to us for our agreement. So we will have the opportunity in that process to agree acceptable um, working hours on the site. Thank you. Anything further? Okay, just one quick one for me, Andrew, if you don't mind. Could you flick back to the site map uh, you showed at the beginning of your slideshow? Sorry, having spent most of my adult life working in these industrial environments, something popped into my head when I saw the diagram. Obviously, that's a large warehouse that's already on the site. And then you see through the middle where they've put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units straight across the wall of it. Are they blocking any fire escapes or is there a walkway through there? Uh, there is a wall. Two metres between the rear of the new buildings and the, uh, the existing building there. Thank you. I'm not entirely sure it was a planning concern in itself. It's just something I know from my industry days. Okay, if we're out of questions, I'm willing to open it to debate. Oh, was it a question, Councillor Thurgo? Thank you, Chair. Um, is there likely to be a partition between the new units uh, on the left that you're looking at there and the actual area where the wagons actually reverse into the docking bays to ensure that safe... I don't know, ped pedestrian access is, is of a safe nature. Does that, does that make sense? Uh, uh, I, if you could just elaborate okay. slightly on which particular buildings would you... On the left, extreme left, yeah. through to the first unit on yeah. the corner. Um, is, that, is there a fence um, planned there? Or? Uh, no, the, um, the area... The paved area in front of the two buildings there um, would have parking um, to either side of it and a central um, route leading to the, uh, the, the, the two doorways um, on these end units which face into the, the car park area there. Okay. Um, and, and that arrangement is, is obviously slightly different there to the other units, mm. but in essence... Um, the, the the nature of the site is one where um, the, the vehicles that are being anticipated, I'm told, mm -hmm. by both the applicants and by Staffordshire County Council Highways, are typically sort of small to medium-sized vehicles rather than um, uh, a, a significant proportion of, of larger articulated type vehicles. Okay. Um, so no, there's no um, there's no sort of barriering between pedestrian access uh, and the vehicle access there. Okay. 
Um, the reason I say that is that I was around on planning, I don't know whether probably Councillor Summers may have done, uh, when they did the, the large building and there was talk about uh, vehicular access around the big warehouse and also I think it was decided that it would come in on the road on the extreme left um, for the lorries um, and they were planned to be large um, articulated lorries that would come in there loading and unloading on the on the bays uh, so that, that's the origin of my question whether or not there would be lorries turning around uh, quite active in that sort of area between those two buildings and the the rest of the new units thank you now I understand a lot better what you were actually trying to say there okay um, there is currently a fence line and there will remain a fence line between the, um, the existing warehouse and the vehicle yard serving that on its western side mm -hmm. and the new development. Okay. So the articulated vehicles that um, sort of will be operating at the existing larger building there, they will be completely separate at all times from That's the, great. the new development. Um, the, th thank you, Chair. If I could just uh, pop in one quick one. The, the roads on the Literal Road Industrial Estate, are they adopted by Tamworth slash Staffordshire County Council in terms of maintenance um, or is it the overall site owner that's responsible for the maintenance of those roads? I'll have to go back and double check exactly what Staffordshire County Council Highways have put in their response um, rather than telling you the wrong thing okay that's that's fair enough um, Thank my you. Um, i i I, I think that they are adopted by uh, the county council however i would need to be able to check that to confirm it for mm -hmm. you okay thank you yeah um i mean the way they are at the moment they're better than coat and lane but um they probably will approach the uh, the standard there thank you anyway cheers chair I could probably help you out slightly on a couple of points there, Councillor Thurgood. I believe a lot of the ground rents on which are paid to Tamworth Borough Council, so I should hope the road's adopted. <laughs> uh, secondly, having managed HGVs for 26 years of my life, looking at that site in red, there's no way there's a turning circle there for a 60 foot long, sorry, a 60 metre long vehicle weighing 44 tonnes. I doubt um, HGVs are going to access that bit of the site. <laughs> Thank you. If that's exhausted questions, does anybody want to make any comments? Councillor Harper. A last question, if I may. If I may. Um, on the landscaping, there doesn't appear to be very much um, going into this on the landscaping of the area. Is there any plan for uh, shrubs, trees, anything that would soften all this grey slab of, um, of, of, of building? Um, and if so, where is it? Uh, yeah, there, there is um, a very limited amount of landscaping. There is a separate landscaping plan, um, which puts more information um, on that um, image there. Um, but as it is at the moment, uh, the, the site is almost exclusively hard surfaced. Um, and because of its relatively small nature, uh, small scale, um, the, the proposed landscaping elements, which in reality will be relatively minimal, um, are located on the periphery um, as indicated there, um, uh, but indeed th there will be um, a degree of landscaping, albeit limited to those areas. Just if, if, I, if I may chair, uh, just, is there any landscaping being lost due to this uh, development? No, as I, um, as I said um, a moment ago, the, the site is is all previously developed it's all it's all hard surfaced um the only vegetation that's on there at the present time is um is, is minimal self-seeded um uh, vegetation and, and nothing of any uh real significance thank you that's what i feared <laughs> okay are we done with questions does anybody want to start any debate or move any motions? 
In that case, then, I'm happy to move the two recommendations, agree the reasons for the approval set out in the report, and two, resolve to grant planning permission subject to conditions listed in Section 8 of the report. Happy to do so, because I think this um, application is a statement of the blindly obvious. It's a piece of Brownville site. It's scrub. Myself and Councillor Thurgood drove past it on our way here. It's a horrible little bit of land. If we can get some employment land on it, get some more employment to town, get some more business rates coming into the local economy, I'm all for this. I cannot see an objection for it. And it doesn't face anybody's house, which is always wonderful. So I'm happy to move that. Uh, do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Cooper. I'll ask all those in favour. I think that is certainly carried. And I think that's all our business for this evening. At which point, unless it's the plan office have anything else. Well, we will for the if you want, it's up to you. Feel free, yeah. Just before I close the meeting, do you want to take the floor? Yeah. Right, as, as Glenn has just um, just said, uh, we, we do have an update on a planning appeal um, for the committee. We were advised yesterday um, by the planning inspectorate um, that an application um, considered by this committee in February of last year uh, for um, development of a two-bedroom dwelling um, at uh, number 96 Greenheart in uh, in Amington, um, which had been recommended for um, approval um, to the committee, um, but um, the determination um, was actually to refuse it. Um, the planning inspector have um, advised, um, sent their report through and their decision, um, advising that the appeal submitted by the applicant um, has been allowed and the uh, house dwelling now um, benefits from uh, planning permission. Thank you for that, that update. Any quick questions of the officers on that? Councillor Thurgood. Uh, can I remind us as well also, we're still being recorded, so we're yeah. very sure what we're asking. Um, yeah, okay. There was, um, it's regarding a site visit that um, was tabled um, in the area of, it's Mersin, isn't it? No. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering if there's um, any advance on that, um, without mentioning the actual site. Um, Croft Avenue? Croft Street? Can I suggest you speak to the two officers after the meeting? Yeah, I can do that. Um, yeah. I think we just need a little bit more detail. So can we do that after the meeting? Obviously, on the update we just have from the officers, any questions or comments quickly before we close the meeting? In that case, can I thank you for that update? And I'm happy to close the meeting at 6.38. And thank you all for your attendance and catch you all soon. Thank you.